Welcome back, everybody. This is Joe Astorino, CCIE number 24347. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at configuring the port security feature on a Cisco Catalyst 3560 switch. Now, if you missed the first part of this video series on the theory and operation of port security, and you're not familiar with those concepts, you might want to run back to the YouTube channel and check that one out so that it puts things that we're doing here in a little bit better perspective. But this video is specifically on the configuration, so we're going to jump right in. We've got a very basic setup here with router 1 connected into our catalyst switch. We can see that here with the show CDP neighbor. So we're connected into catalyst 1 on port fast 01. Now, as I was saying in the theory portion, uh, with port security, there's really three different ways to configure a secured MAC address on our ports. We can do it with uh, statically defined secure addresses, dynamic secure addresses, or sticky secured addresses. We're going to take a look at all three of those today. We're going to start out with a statically configured secure MAC address. So what we're going to do is we're going to hard code in or statically define a secure MAC address for router 1's fast ethernet 00 interface here that's plugged into the switch. So to get that interface uh, MAC address, let's run a show interface on router 1. We'll see that MAC address right here. So we're going to run over to the cat switch and begin our port security configuration. First thing we're going to notice is that there's nothing there. But what we have to remember is on a Catalyst 3560, our default mode is dynamic auto. Now to configure port security, what you need is either an access port or you need a trunk port. So we're going to configure this as an access port. Switch port mode access. Now for the static port security, I'm going to say switch port port security MAC address and then paste in my MAC and then I'm going to say switch port port security. Now to validate that what we can do is take a look at a few different commands. We can take a look at show port security of course and we're going to see here that we do have a secure port on FAST01. We can have a maximum of one MAC address because that's the default. We currently have one that we've learned. We haven't violated. We don't have any violation count. And our secure action is shut down, which is also the default violation. Another helpful command is show port security interface, where we can actually see that port security is enabled. Our status is secure up because we haven't gone over the one allotted MAC address we have. Our violation mode is shut down. We don't have aging configured because aging is not enabled by default. We don't have secure static aging enabled. We have a maximum of one MAC we can learn on this port. We've learned one and we have one configured statically. It'll also tell us the MAC that we learned last, which is router one with the VLAN, VLAN 1. So that's another great command. Another one you can look at is show port security address, which I really like because it tells you the type of secured address right here. So we can see that it is secure configured, or in other words, it's a static address. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show you guys a violation. Now because we have a maximum of one MAC address we can see here, and we defined that MAC address statically, if we see any other MAC address at this point, the port should get shut down. So what we're going to do here is we're going to jump back to router 1, and I'm going to shut down this port real quick, and we're going to manually tell it to use a different MAC address. We're going to say MAC address 1011111111111. And we're going to bring the port back up. Now when this happens, our switch port should log a violation and shut itself down because we can only have a max of one. That one is statically defined and we're going to now add another MAC address here that is not that static address that we've already defined. So let's no shut the port 
and watch what happens. Comes up. And in a minute here, as soon as router 1 starts sending frames, there we go. And you can see here that we had error disable because of a port security violation detected on port 1 and it put us into the error disabled state. It even tells us it was caused by this MAC address. So what we're going to do now is on the switch we're going to shut down the port and we're going to go ahead and we're going to say switch port port security maximum 2. So we're going to now say we can allow two different MAC addresses on this port. Now what we'll do is we'll shut no shut the port to get rid of the error disable and bring it back up. Now what's going to happen if we take a look at our port configuration is we're saying okay we can have two addresses one is already statically defined so that covers one of them and the second one we can learn dynamically based on that command there. So this one uses our one the fake MAC address we put on router 1 is going to be dynamically learned and we should be fine. So let's do show port security interface fast 01. And that's exactly what we're going to see here. We're secure up. We have a maximum of 2. We've learned 2. We have 1 that was uh, statically configured here. Now there seems to be some discrepancy out there if a statically defined address is going to stick around in your config after you reload. It absolutely will and we're going to prove that to you. I'm going to go ahead and reload my router or reload my switch here. I'm going to put you guys on pause and when it comes back up we'll take a look and see what happened. Okay we're back from the reload. The switch just came back up. Let's take a look at our interface and we'll see that our statically defined secure address is still intact. Show port security interface. We can see that everything is exactly the same we left it. So it definitely does get added to your running config. Now dynamically learned secure addresses. We've already seen an example here. By saying switch port port security, that allows the dynamic learning. So in this case we have one statically defined address and we have one dynamically learned address the 1011111111 address that we hard coded on router 1 so we're actually doing two things at the same time here we're doing a static and we're doing a dynamic now the dynamic learned address with all the ones in it that does not get stored anywhere in our configuration so every time we power cycle or reload the router what happens is the switch has to go ahead and relearn that address. So now what we're going to do is modify this just a bit. We're going to take out our statically configured address and we're going to take a look at a sticky address. So for sticky I'm going to say switch port port security MAC address sticky. And what's going to happen there, take a quick look, what you'll notice here is that it added a line of configuration. So what this does is it said, okay, switch port, port security, MAC address, sticky. I'm going to dynamically learn any addresses that are on this port up to the maximum. And if I find any, I'm going to basically hard code it by adding in this line. Now what will happen is when I write my config, that information in that line there is now saved and will be loaded when we reload the switch. So the port will not have to relearn the same address again. Now show port security interface. We're going to see that we still have a maximum of two defined. We've only learned one since we got rid of our static. We don't have any statically configured addresses. We have one sticky learned MAC address and that was the last one we went ahead and learned. So if I re reload my switch again right now, what you're going to see is that this line here stays in my config and I don't have to relearn that address. And that's basically sticky learning. 
Now, one important thing with uh, sticky learning is even if you configure port security aging, sticky learned secure MAC addresses never age out of the uh, secure MAC address table. So something to keep in mind. Real quick, we're going to look at some of the aging options. So as you can see up here, aging is disabled by default. That's why it says zero minutes. The aging type, if you choose to enable it by default, is absolute. So really you have two different aging types. You've got absolute, which means after X number of minutes, or after the aging time, no matter what, it's going to age that MAC address out of the secure table. You also have inactivity, which means after the aging time um, of inactivity on the port, so if the port has been inactive for the aging time, then we're going to age it out of the secure MAC table. A couple different uh, ways to configure that. So we'll look at configuring aging here for a second. Let's get rid of our sticky configuration just to simplify things. So we simply have dynamic learning on with a maximum of two addresses. To configure aging, I'm going to say switch port, port security, aging time. We can give it a time in minutes. Let's just say uh, five minutes. And now I need to tell it what type of aging do I want absolute or inactivity? Let's say inactivity. And look at port security interface. And now we'll see that the aging time is five minutes and the type is inactivity. So basically what this is telling us now is if one of our dynamically learned secure MAC addresses stops talking and it's inactive for five minutes, then that dynamically learned address will be aged out of the secure table. And that's really how you configure aging. Now there's a couple different quirks with aging. Number one, by default, if we had our statically configured MAC address like we did in the first example, aging does not affect that. And that's where this option comes into play here. If you want to age out statically configured secure addresses, then you need to say switch port port security, aging, static. With that command, it will go ahead and age out statically configured Macs. Now, like I said before, if you have a sticky learned Mac address, it will never age out, no matter what, even if you configure the aging. So that's something to keep in mind as well, and something that is referenced in the 3560 configuration guide. Now one more thing I want to show you, if oops, if your port happens to go error disabled because you have a violation of shutdown and you had a port security violation, you can configure your switch to automatically recover after a certain amount of time with the error disable command set. So we're going to say error disable recovery cause was a port security violation. Then we're going to say error disable recovery interval. We're going to say if it went down due to error disable, or if it went error disabled because of a port security violation, automatically recover the port after, say, 30 seconds. Otherwise, the only way to recover it is to go in and manually shut no shut the port. So that's how you enable automatic recovery. And that's about it here, guys, for uh, port security. This video really covers all different spans of the uh, study curriculum, from the very basics, if you're working on your CCENT, CCNA, really the only thing you need to be worried about is switch port port security and have a basic idea of what it does. As you get into your NP and certainly your CCIE, all the different modes and your aging timers, and uh, exactly what's going on there becomes a lot more important. All depends on where you are with your studies, but uh, if you're working on your NA, a little bit more information can never hurt. And hopefully this video's been informative for everybody out there. Now I did write up a blog on this uh, particular topic. My blog's over at astorinonetworks.com. 
you can get all sorts of free and great articles on uh, on Cisco Network Engineering and of course you can watch the YouTube channel youtube.com slash Astorino Networks and you can follow me on Twitter at JAsterino. Thanks for watching guys and until next time keep studying hard.